everyone, it's Holly with Missouri River Soap and today I'm going to make some bath bombs. And so the first thing I want to do, I'm a little disorganized because I haven't been working over here much recently. I kind of spread out over several tables. I'm going to measure out two tablespoons of distilled water. I know there's a group of people that like distilled water and others don't. I find that it works really well. And when I started using water, I finally started being able to make some bath bombs that were nice and hard. So I'm going to go with kind of a, it's going to be blue, but I want just a hint, just a hint of, of a purple color. So just a little bit of blue one dye. And then I'm going to put in just a pinch of red 28. These are water soluble dyes. I just want to mix that up and allow it to kind of set for a moment while I mix in my baking soda. Get it uh, measured, I should say. So if you've never been to my channel before, I'm kind of a, a chatty maker. I just kind of like to chat and have fun with it and not be super crazy organized and edit it out. Okay, so I have some baking soda here. And I'm just going to measure 100 grams. Make sure I'm on grams. 1,000 grams. Almost there. A little bit more. Big chunk wants to come out there. A little over a thousand, but that's okay. Now, one thing I wanted to do was double check how many ounces this was. So it's about 35.40 ounces. Okay. So I want to. Oops, some got away from me there. Just kind of break up this baking soda. It's definitely important that it's sifted so those big clumps can be worked through. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and use it shortly. I'm going to add in this beautiful blue water. I'm going to let it dye the baking soda. If you have it lowered. I'm going to stop for a moment and measure out my other liquid ingredients. I'm going to use four teaspoons of apricot kernel oil. And we're gonna measure this so that I can see how much it weighs also. Okay. 
Okay, so four teaspoons, about 11 grams of apricot kernel oil. I'm going to use half as much in polysorbate. This helps to emulsify the oils in the bath and helps to keep the dyes from staining the tub. It's much thicker. So that's about three grams per teaspoon in my experience that I've been measuring. That goes to seven. Okay. We're gonna add in 24 grams of huckleberry fragrance, huckleberry harvest from nature's garden. It's kind of the most popular huckleberry fragrance there is. Come on now. Seems like it goes so quickly until you're there at the end like that. Okay. And then I'm also going to add in 5 grams of 70% alcohol. And I have noticed that about one spray is a gram. And I went up to 6 this time. That was a much better sprayer, apparently. So I'll kind of stir this about, and it kind of emulsifies a little, kind of gets a little cloudy anyway. I like it. I like it like that. Set that to the side. Now I need to finish getting this all mixed in really well. moment. Now I'm going to be measuring in some powders. I still need to blend this up a bit more. I don't sift these. Okay, so I'm going to do 25 grams of tapioca flour, tapioca starch. This is organic. I like it. Alright, so I do just kind of wing it. I do go over sometimes, but I'm having major issues. I try to be careful. 25. Good. That does not like to close up. I need to transfer it into another container. I'm going to do 40 grams of buttermilk powder. Now, buttermilk does help with the foaming. 40 grams. And of course it's going to help create a more luxurious bath. There we go. Just going to mix that in a little bit with my hands. I find that these KitchenAids are delightful, but they still don't do that great at mixing in down here at the bottom. I have a different kind of a scraper paddle, but so far I have not been happy with it. Now I am going to use some coarse SLSA for foam. And I do use 40 grams of this also. About a tablespoon is 10 grams. SLSA is very easily airborne, so it's best to use a mask. I'm just being very careful today so that I can talk to you. Going to mix in 
liquid oil and um, so we have fragrance and a little bit of alcohol. In such small amounts, it's actually easier to measure it into the bowl if you're careful. So it looks at some of that baking soda that escaped from me. It's getting a little uh, clumpy in here and not breaking up and dispersing with the color as well. It's very important to sift all the ingredients to avoid that. I'm actually going to be making several batches. So for this part, I'm showing the, the making of the batch, the mix, and then I'll show the pressing of another one because I kind of need to just move right over there without spending a lot of extra time resetting the camera and changing my gloves, etc. So into this container, I have some fine citric acid. I'm going to use 450 grams. Get the citric acid resealed so it does not take in any additional moisture. Let's look and see what this is. This is about 15.9 ounces, so almost a pound of the citric acid. Typically, it's two to one. I'm going to a smidgen different. So while this is mixing, I'm going to add in the citric acid. The citric acid does adjust the color just a little bit. So I'm going to be dumping it into this bowl. But as you can see, it's a little bit dry. Now in my experience, when I get it too wet, it doesn't press as well. So this is good enough for me. It's like a nice powder that still presses. But we'll see. I'll let you know when I come back for the pressing on the next one. Okay, so I'm back now with the second batch to press. And I have a little scale down here, but you're not going to be able to see it. What did I just do? Pressing buttons. What's going on? There we go. So I have this cute star mold. Well, it looks like I need to clean a little bit off of inside, but we'll see. Okay, so this is a four-piece star. We have the attachment here. We have this bottom piece that slides in. And now I'm going to weigh in about four ounces. Now, I find it's nice to keep the powder fluffy. And so I just put it into the cup like so, and then measure it in. I want it to be four ounces, and that totally did not even register, but I know that it needs just a hint more than a overflowing half a cup. So now I take this other star piece, 
and put it on the top. I'm gonna try to keep my arms out of the way. And press. This looks like it's too full. Not quite sure what I did there. It might be alright. So I have this over here. I think you can kind of see it. I'm gonna cut a thumb to release it. And then I bring the star back to the mixture. Thumb it once and release it. Now this one, it made a little bit of a mark, but I just fixed it. So there we have one star and I'm ruining it because I'm dilly daddling and handling it awkwardly, but that's about it. So I'm going to try to work more quickly. There we go, now my scale is paired. And I do like the four ounces. Now the nice thing about this machine is its safety features. It won't go if you're not equally on each side. So, say, whoa, there are, it went. There we go. I probably should have done it twice. Anyway, the general idea is it has that safety feature that both of your hands have to be on the press for it to go. I'm a little shaky today. I'm not kind of not very conducive with bath bomb making always, but anyway, so I hope you can see this well enough. It's kind of hard to position it in a convenient spot. That is a little too much. Hmm. Huh. This one I think I'm on a roll, right? Okay. So, down. I have it set about 50, 60, 70. 80 to 90 PSI. Can't really tell without really studying it. So, arm up. I tap it once just to release that top piece. Smack it on this little tamper remover contraption that's so convenient. I love it. And then I'm. Oh, I kind of ruined it because I lifted the. I lifted the mold a bit weird. I do that sometimes. I was on a roll with this first batch. I got the whole batch done very, very well. So sometimes it's just it's just the yammering in general kind of messes me up a little bit. But I wanted to do a video for you. So I spent quite a bit of time just um, testing different recipes and just getting it where I wanted it. I'm really wanting a floating bath bomb and I want it to be hard enough to ship obviously because I'm a, oops, I about forgot. I'm a, I'm a shipper. I do not do any local um, events. So I wanted it to have all these different features. So I took some of the recipes I had available to me and um, just kind of messed around and tweaked. I admit I got, I did get a little frustrated and talked to Jason a little bit with the, the um, B3 bomber, which is the bath bomb machine, this beautiful contraption, which I love that it's steady. Guys, this isn't going anywhere. I've seen some of these other bath bomb machines and they're so light that they shift this one doesn't shift. It just hangs out and does what it's supposed to do. So, I need to get a longer cord for my poor little scale over here. I can't hardly use one with a battery because they just turn off too quickly. So this is all going quite well, but I have had some frustrating days, but it's just 
you know, it's all a learning curve. And every single location is going to be different. You're going to have different humidity. And then, you know, day to day, bath bombs can be tricky. What I like about this bath bomb press is it eliminates the pressing part for me. Now, there was a little bit of a learning curve to discovering that, you know, it really just does need to be a little bit drier. If it gets too wet, it sticks in the mold, which that's common with even a standard mold. But I did find that this needs to be just, just a hint drier. So I'm able to move along pretty quickly now. And, you know, I couldn't do this by hand. There's some people out there that are pretty epic at the hand pressing, but I couldn't. I have carpal tunnel and I have, well, I have a wrist injury right now. But I can make bath bombs all afternoon and it really not bother me too much. And there's no way I could have done that without a press. It is a business investment. The whole idea behind the press is that it is for business. And to bring in the profit from the bath bombs. There are people out there, man, they can just whip these things out. Show you. Ooh, here we go. I know. They can just whip these out, and if you have somebody who can help you, you know, kind of like make the mix, and another person is pressing, that's just so awesome. You can just move very quickly, and I will probably see if I can get to that stage. But I'm able to press pretty quickly. I noticed that with my tweaks, I don't have to move super quickly. So I like that. Because I'm not always a fast mover. So I'm glad that I can have a mixture that I don't have to move super fast with, but still gets nice and hard. And in a, about a few days, I found that in Missouri, like today, the humidity level outside is 55 to 60 percent. And I have made these on rainy days too. It's just a matter of adjusting your moisture like I might not have added in that extra um, five grams of the alcohol if it were extra rainy but my goal is to be able to make bath bombs that I could make on a rainy day because it is mostly rainy slash humid in Missouri from spring through the fall we just have a lot of humidity here in Missouri. That's just the way it is. So, my goal was to design a recipe that would be able to work with the humidity. So, the other main thing that is so important is just to keep this mixture fluffy. And that's why putting it into the measuring cup works really nice for me. I just like to keep it Keeping it fluffy. There are all sorts of shapes. I have a sphere. I have the donut. I bought a smaller sphere. And of course I have this star. Um, I want to get some others for like shower steamers in the fall in winter time I would like to maybe get the heart and again I just want to tell you it's an investment for a business and it really works out in the long run somebody who is just you know um, just having fun with bath bombs this may not be um, you know kind of in your financial future unless you are extra wealthy which hey that'd be fun 
but for somebody who is running a business and making bath bombs for profit, I highly recommend this B3 bomber. I've been watching some videos of some other ones, and I don't know guys, I just really, there's a lot of features on this one I like. I just like how, I just like how heavy everything is. I don't need to do a double press. I did there for a while. I think I kind of just like watched too many videos and got in the zone on a, on a double press. But I don't need to double press. One will do it. Now, I noticed that if my mixture Maybe I said that right. My mixture is too wet. It sticks in the mold a little bit. So the dryer is better. Another thing for me in my humid environment, starting out a little bit drier, I'm able to proceed and finish this whole batch without it becoming too dry. Kind of takes in a little bit of a moisture from the air. I do have a dehumidifier running most of the time. So I noticed that I still got still got some little chunks even though I sifted all of my dry ingredients with this with this batch. So I'm not sure what that's all about. It's just like not taking color. No thank you. I love the sound this makes, and because my husband outfitted it to run down to the garage to the compressor, this whole get up over here, I have zero noise for me, zero bothersome noise. And that is typically a complaint with a um, compressor driven press, but I don't have any problems with it. So you can see, I just squeezed that, and it's now sticking better than it was when I started this process. So I'm going to just try to get the rest in here, and I know you can't see the best, but I was trying to strategically place the camera. I feel this is too much. Oh, right on four ounces. Sweetness. Sweetness. I do like to kind of thump it a little bit and let it even even out a bit. Last one. I almost didn't have my finger on there right. You could hear that it was saying no thank you, but it went ahead and went because I was close enough. But the point is is that my fingers were out of the way. And just kind of brush some of that off. And remove that piece and there we have it it's a beautiful star all right guys I'm gonna keep working I'm gonna do one more batch I've got a goal to accomplish today I'm gonna do one more batch I'm still staying around the 1,000 gram batch of baking soda for right now but I anticipate that I will be able to increase this and of course I can work much quicker when I'm not yapping so
so here we have the bath bomb and it has had a few days to dry out I find that two to three days is really necessary for me um, it's very hard it does not dent or have any issues it's pretty solid and let's test it out Come back over here, buddy. So it's foaming and it's fizzing and it's floating. So those are all very good signs. Um, it's just going to make this um, kind of just foam on top of the water. However, if you agitate the water, it will create larger bubbles or if you just have this bath bomb underneath the you know the pressure of the water so you can see just starting to agitate the water a little bit starts to just make the bubbles you can turn on the sprayer and it immediately makes more bubbles Makes a lot of nice bubbly bath bubbles. So you can just kind of do this. Or just turn it off and let it continue to fizz and float. 